Hi, today we are going to discuss the concept of limits. So we have situations sometimes when we need to find the value of a particular function when uh, the function or expression gets close to a specific value without necessarily getting to that value. And that process is called evaluating the limit. So here's the limit notation. We write it as lim of f of x or some kind of an expression here. On the bottom it's going to have x approaches a and it's going to equal some value. And we read that as the limit of f of x as x approaches a is equal to l. So let's consider this first example. We're going to use tables to um, make sure we understand what is happening here. So the first uh, limit we need to evaluate is the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared plus 1. We're not trying to plug in 2 into the function. We're trying to see as we get closer to 2 what's happening with this expression. So I made a table of values. We have these numbers. So here I'm approaching 2 from the left and here I'm approaching 2 from the right. Please note I do not get to a value of 2. So what we do here is we simply take each one of these numbers, substitute that into x squared plus 1 and we calculate what we get. So if you do this, for 1.5 you're going to get 3.25 for 1.9 you're going to get 4.61 for 1.99 you're going to get 4.9601 If I'm going to approach from the other side for 2.5 I get 7.25 for 2.1 I get 5.41 for 2.01 I'm going to get 5.0401 so what I want you to notice here is what value do you think we're getting close to when we try to approach 2 which is somewhere here you see here the numbers are gradually going up going towards a certain number and here the numbers are gradually going down heading towards a certain number and that value is actually going to be 5 you can continue making it closer and closer and you will see that the numbers from both sides will be getting closer to 5. So we can conclude that the limit is going to equal 5. Uh, in, in other words, we can say that as x approaches 2, the value of x squared plus 1 approaches 5. Okay. So this is the concept of that. Again, um, this is something that where you need to understand that you don't always work with uh, the value. So here's a question. If I would have taken 2 and simply substituted it into x squared plus 1, you will get 5. So the question is, why do we go through this tedious process? Can't we just always do it like that? The answer is not always. So here is a problem. You get limit uh, as x approaches negative 2 of this expression and here is the issue you, if you take negative 2 and substitute it here you will get uh, 0 on the bottom you're actually going to get 0 on top as well so you cannot just evaluate that at negative 2 by simple substitution but what about the limit so if you start plugging in the, the the values into this expression uh, the easiest thing might be to plug it in the graphing calculator and just uh, you know, you use the value feature to, to, to do that. So at negative 2.5, again, I have numbers here approaching negative 2 from the left and from the right. So for here, I'm going to get negative 4.5. For negative 2.1, I'm going to get negative 4.1. For negative 2.01, I'm going to get negative 4.01. From the other side, this is going to give me negative 3.5 for negative 1.5. For negative 1.9, I'm going to get negative 3.9. And for negative 1.99, I'm going to get negative 3.99. So we look very closely what's happening here. I think we can all agree that this is getting closer and closer to 4. Right? And that's actually what's going to happen. So the limit here it's going to equal 4 and that means that as you make x approach negative 2 the value of that expression here is going to approach I'm sorry negative 4 of course is going to approach negative 4 All right so here's an interesting thing to uh, understand I'm 
going to show you a graph of this function. This is what it looks like. And when you look at that, you don't realize that, I mean, it looks like a line, except when you don't realize, if I'm going to go to the table, and I'm going to go up to the value of negative 2, I have error. Why? Because I cannot take negative 2 and I cannot substitute that number into the expression because you have 0 divided by 0. Yet you have limit. So you can approach a certain value, but the value does not exist at the point. All right. So this is why we actually have to work with the concept of limit because there are many situations when we don't have a value at the particular point, yet we can figure out what's going on with the function as we approach that um, value. Here's one more problem for us to consider. So we need to evaluate this limit as x approaches 3 of x minus 3 divided by x squared minus 9. Same issue, if you try to substitute 3 into this expression, you are going to get 0 divided by 0. Can be done, so we cannot evaluate this expression at that point. Um, if you're going to be using a values here from the, the table, you are going to get decimals. Uh, not very pretty, so I'm just going to round all these decimals to four decimal places. So for 2.5, when you use that, it's going to give you 0.1818. Here we're going to get 0.1695. You can check all these values by um, entering this function in your calculator and evaluating that. 0.1669. From the other side, this is going to be 0.1538. 0.1639 and 0.1664. Okay, what makes it a little trickier here is you don't actually see a clear value that it's approaching, but it looks like this is gradually going up to something 0.166 is 1.66 here, right? So as you if you continue making it closer and closer, you will start seeing numbers like 0.1666666 something. So what happens here is this actually approach to 0.1666 repeating. This is actually 0.16 like this. And that number is actually 1 sixth. Okay. Uh, there are other methods to figure it out without, you know, uh, doing all this work, of course, and uh, without having to guess on what that decimal might represent. Um, and that's for another thing. Right now, we're just trying to understand the whole concept of limits. So what we can conclude here is this expression approach is one sixth. The limit approach is one. Well, as x gets closer to three, that the value of that expression is going to approach one sixth. So we have. One six. Okay. So that's how this works, and I hope this helps.